Ah, okay. So thank you once again for joining us. Please do well to share the link with your friends, the people in your contact list, so that uh, more people can join us. So you can share the um, insights, experience, and all that our two beautiful hosts have for us today. So once again, you're welcome to today, today's program. We are grateful for joining us today. We are going to start our program by God's grace. So I am also the J Boateng, by the way, a fellowship at um, Community Theory SDA Church. And thank you once again for joining us. So I'm your host, I'll be your moderator for today. So joining me as well will be um, Abena Duma Menu, who might also be our host for today. So please, if you see us interchanging, um, just know that she's also a co host as well. So we are going to propose a few ground rules so that um, the program might be smooth because we don't want any um, unintentional transmissions coming from listeners and, and viewers. So we are going to propose a few. So first of all, we are going to mute everybody's microphones. All right, we are going to mute everybody's microphones so that um, the screen will be only on the speaker. I mean, the speakers when they are given us their presentations. And then secondly, please type your questions and your contributions into the chat room, okay? We can do that as the program goes on. We are going to address each and every question at the end of the session after our speakers give us their presentation. So please type your questions, your contributions, anything that you want us to know, please type them into the chat room. I know people are listening to us from Facebook, from YouTube, and from Zoom. So please, wherever you are, we are going to see your questions, we are going to see your contributions. So please do well to type them in there. Thank you very much. So we are going to go on and have our opening prayer from Mr. Jeremiah Mesa now, and then he'll give us an expository on the whole higher heights program. Thank you. We'll be glad to see all of us close our eyes whilst we pray or meditate on some few. All right. Father Almighty, we thank you so much for a wonderful session that you are going to give us today. We ask for your blessings and we pray that you let your Holy Spirit see us through this program. Let this program be a wonderful program. And may all be done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we'll go on to get our expository from Mr. Miza now. A little brief about uh, um, the whole Higher Heights program. All right. Hello, viewers. We are glad that you are able to join us today. God bless you. Higher Heights is an annual event organized by the Saint Outreach. The group of young Adventists working on a lifetime project geared towards winning many souls for Christ through music and literature. The flagship program of the literature group focuses on a central idea, that is the need for excellence in the Adventist youth. We come your way this year with two very distinguished speakers who serve as mentors for the youth in all aspects of their lives. This year, our theme, Beyond the Pandemic, Strategies for Personal Growth, and Development, is sound our need for excellence, the fact that it looks like the world is in a standstill. Hopefully, we shall resume our normal duties, but the question you need to ask yourself is, will you be ready to cope with the new ways of living. It's our hope that you will be with the knowledge and insight you gain from this speakers today. Thank you once again. Enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Jeremy Mesa. Now, so we'll go on without wasting much time. We're going to introduce our speakers. As you said, um, this is the first time you're having two speakers. Um, speak to us for a high highs program. We are very privileged this year. So I'm going to introduce my very first speaker. And um, without wasting my time, she's in the person of Dr. Mrs. Sela Ejenimboateng. 
and I think she's a very renowned human resource director here in Ghana, um, very, very respected woman. So she currently works at the Volta River Authority, having previously been with Glyco Ghana and Vodafone Ghana, where she helped Vodafone Ghana win several awards with her expertise and her knowledge and experience. Um, she has several um, achievements to her name as well. And amongst them include the uh, HR practitioner of the year in 2015 and 2016. She was part of the top 10 human resource tech leaders in Africa in 2015. The, she won the Ultimate Woman Award in 2017. She won the HR Change Maker in 2018. And then she was part of the top 20 human resource professionals in Ghana in 2019. So she has several citations as well to her name. You can see that she's very involved um, in programs and projects that involve building up the youth for um, a better tomorrow. She's empowered to do that. You can see that she's a respected woman who is a force that um, champions the, the ideas and then the needs of women as well. So if you continue, I mean, she has a lot of accolades to her name, as we know her. I think she's known all over Ghana for the program she does and then all over the world as well, where people call her to come and chair their programs. So without much ado, we are going to invite um, our first speaker, Dr. Mrs. Stelle Jenimboatin, to speak to us. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, um, Oswald, uh, Jerry, and all the organizers of um, the Saints uh, program, or Higher Heights program, I think. Yeah, thank you also for inviting me, and thank you, audience, for, for joining wherever you are. Um, it's important for us at this time to start thinking about some of these issues as has been uh, put across by the organizer. And now it is very it's very clear that there is a pandemic and it is very clear that all of us are you know bearing the brunt of this pandemic it's very clear that a lot of things have changed but i think that the most important thing that we should understand is that i mean in the in the foreseeable future uh, the pandemic will have an impact on how you know we do our businesses on how our personal growth and development will will be and uh, you know what strategies we need to ensure that even after the pandemic, we will still be um, we will still stand the test of time, and it will be important for us as young people to, under to understand that when the situations change, what do we need to do to also make sure that we are in the scheme of things? And so our topic for today, beyond the pandemic, what are the strategies for personal growth and development? I've tried to take it from various angles to make sure that it fits whether you are working today or you are you are still in school, whatever you are doing, you can't get a few nuggets out of this. And I'm sure that at the end of the program, we are going to see uh, some new ways, some new strategies that we might be able to develop to support ourselves. And so, as has been said, Excuse me. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, Am I still on? Can you hear me? Yes, please. Yes. All right. So now that we know that the pandemic is on, and yes, we please. are telling ourselves that it's going to be with us for as long as God knows when, um, it's important for us to start working towards a new normal. And so before the pandemic, we all know that we had certain patterns of, you know, our values, our beliefs, our assumptions, the things that we used to do, how we used to relate with each other, whether it is in a family situation or the work situation with our church or our careers. In everything, you know, we had a way we will hug people, we will greet people, and, you know, we'll do things in a very traditional way. But now the currency that is really gaining is 
the new normal. And the new normal is taking us away from those traditional patterns of shared values and beliefs that we had. And so what we need to appreciate is that now that we have our new normal, how are we going to, to react to the situation now and even after? And so the question we need to ask ourselves is, what is this new normal? Because I think again, it's become a term that um, you see people using all over the place. But what really is that new normal? The new normal is the movement from what we have been used to traditionally in the way of dealing with things, in the way of managing situations, in the way of building relationships to a new set of rules that are guiding our, our way of doing things today. And so for instance, when you talk about the new normal, you are looking at situations where now there are acceptable ways of relating to each other. Like I said, unlike before, you see a friend, you see a family member and you want to hug the person you greet and that is us. But now the new normal dictates the fact that that will not be an acceptable, acceptable way of relating to anybody. And so how do we manage that? The new normal is looking at different working concepts. For those of you who are working, we have been used to the traditional central point where we all go and congregate and then we work. But today, what is gaining currency is remote working, much more than traditional system of working. What is gaining currency is flexi working. Because why? The new normal dictates that we should have social distancing. We had not built our offices and spaces of work to contain that kind of um, new normal because it wasn't with us. And therefore, what can we do? We have to explore new ways of doing things. And one of the ways of doing it at the workplace is remote working, it's flexi working, it's using technology and other working tools to deliver the same results, maybe more efficiently for us in the workplace. It is the same with church. I mean, going to church, congregating was one of the key things, fellowshipping together in one traditional central point. But today, for the past couple of months, all of us have been worshiping, but not meeting each other. We are using technology to assess, you know, uh, uh, worship centers and to assess our preachers and all that. So this is a new normal. There are new protocols to follow. Now, even though we used to wash our hands, for instance, I know people who were only, you know, washing our, their hands, not even before eating, but after eating. Now, whether you have eaten or not, whether you have table on, uh, food on your table or not, you think that it's important for you to wash your hands. You think that you have to use sanitizers. How many of us were using sanitizers before the, the COVID-19? And so these are all new protocols that we need to follow. Now you see all of us, and except for instance, when you are alone, like I am right now where I am, otherwise you see people, so long as you are two or more, you have to use your face mask. These are new protocols. These are things that are dictating and defining the new normal. We have choices to make in this new situation, and we have new mandates to live by. There are rules, there are policies, they are with legal backing that we have to all live by. And we have to live that and still deliver service, deliver our work output, still within that same you know, confines of our new normal. In fact, even the mental psyche to contain some of these things that are now the new ways of doing things, it's very important and it also dictates that new normal that we are talking about. And so I want to ask us the question that is the new normal beneficial at all? I think now when you walk into every conversation, people are talking about, you know, COVID-19, everybody has something to say about it. Everybody has had an experience of a sort. But I think that generally we seem to make it look that it is really ugly. It is, you know, it is all about doom and gloom. Yes, indeed. I mean, of course, when we are losing loved ones, we are losing people, when people are falling ill and cannot, you know, uh, hospitals are having to run um, 24 hours around the clock, etc. Obviously, there is doom and there is gloom. But I think that all in all, in every situation, we need to look at what is in there for us. What is it that we can take advantage of and run with it? Because as we have said, it is possible that we are going to live in this kind of situation for, for as long as God knows when. And therefore, let us understand that are there any benefits that this new situation, this new normal is going to give us? And therefore, if there are, 
how do we even identify them? So for instance, we talked about flexible work schedules. Indeed, this is a work schedule that will give people the opportunity to bond together with their families, to be able to have their own space. If you are working remotely, you don't have to commute. And therefore, the, the, the risk of commuting, you are spending so much in, in, in traffic, you are spending so much time in traffic, you are spending a lot of money. I mean, if you are working in Accra, you are living in Tema or vice versa, you are paying tolls, you know, and you think these are small monies, but you end up, you know, spending so much. And so now with the new normal, if you have to work remotely, if you have to work from home, for instance, then there is some savings that, you know, you are making. Again, the flexible working schedules give people the opportunity to try and still deliver within certain time frames that, you know, work for them. We are talking about efficient ways of working. Obviously, what it means is that now we are going to stress more on the use of technology. We are going to use technology a lot more. And that brings in its, in its you know, uh, track some level of efficiency. And so that is also good because people who are not used to, I don't know how many of us before now would you know agree that we should use Zoom for a very beautiful program like this. We would all want to congregate in one location and start doing it. People will be coming in their own time. And so you don't know whether to start on time. You don't know whether you have to wait for everybody. When people are in and out of the room, they cause a lot of distractions. But now we are all here. I, I can imagine the number of people who are listening into this from various locations. People don't have to travel to that central location to be able to be part of this program that we are running. And so the good norm, uh, the new normal has brought in this week some benefits, you know, work-life balance. There are people who wake up and go to work. By the time they, they are going, their children are asleep. By the time they come back so late because of traffic and all other issues, their children are still asleep. For the whole week, Monday to Friday, they may not have the opportunity to parent their children. Children will not have the op opportunity to bond with their parents. But now, if for instance, you have the opportunity by the kind of work that you do to be working from home, then you are able to create a better work-life balance. And that is, that is good for families. That is good for our own health. And it becomes, you know, a sense, uh, it, it gives us a, you know, a certain soundboard because we start making sense out of life. We start understanding that life is not just about the, the up and down, the back and forth, the rat race, but there is a lot more serenity that can still help us to deliver to our businesses and to deliver to whatever, you know, our life strategies and our life goals are. Again, it helps us to control, you know, and uh, our work mechanisms. So we are able to check the things that we do and job opportunities because today, People have started looking at, I mean, it is very beautiful to see uh, our entrepreneurs springing up because of COVID. Look at the number of people who have gone into produ production of face masks, production of other things, sanitizers, and what have you do. People didn't have that business mindset around things like that because it was not part of our lives. But now we are making money out of it. I'm sure that there are people on the, listening in to, uh, this afternoon who are making or taking advantage of the situation today, you know, to, to be able to develop certain things that are helpful. Now, um, technology, if you are selling technology of any sort, you are making some gains. People are bringing out their entrepreneurial mindset and there's time to reflect on, you know, the things that you do. You become a lot more innovative because when you have time, you are able to think and make reflections and you become, you know, you think about what new things to do. How can you do things differently? How do you do things? And so we want to say that there is a lot of you know, advantages that or the good that the normal, the new normal has given us. But however, we know that there is the bad. So the new normal is producing the good, it is also producing the bad. And the bad is, you know, how are we managing and accepting the change? I mean, there are people who cannot really cope with the change. And why that? Because they have certain situations where they are not even in a position to be, to be isolated from, I mean, when they're isolated from people, it has its own challenges for them. And these people don't see the current situation as welcoming because they want to have the opportunity to be around people and so it becomes a liability for them the new normal becomes a liability for them in a lot of organizations today 
you are looking at mergers and acquisitions because the strategies of organizations have had to change because of the COVID, because of the situation that we are in. And when your, 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 your financial muscles are not so strong enough to contain the situation and to manage you know, your business, then we will be seeing a lot of mergers and acquisitions. And when there are mergers and acquisitions, it has its own repercussions and impact on unemployment and on many other things. And so that becomes uh, you know, a liability for people who may for some reason have to you know, uh, uh, whether lose jobs or you know, um, become jobless as it were, or may even lose some amount of compensation because of the situation that we are in. There are people in the uh, hospitality industry, there are people in the airline industry and many others that cannot cannot even see the survival of their businesses because there's no travel now. How many people are traveling to other countries to, to, to go and live in hotels? I mean, how do people even find certain things safe, things that we were used to do, uh, used to doing? And so you realize that people are going to organizations, are going to go into acquisitions and mergers, and that has its own impact on people. And that obviously will become a liability to the individual as well as to the, uh, to the, to the families. Poor time management. When people have all the time to themselves, and for instance, they have to work from home, they are not going to church as a, you know, as the traditional way. I can be sure that there will be people on a Sabbath like this when they know that typically they would have, you know, waking up at a certain time, get dressed, take their vehicles, go to to church, and then be part of the the, the service and the worship. Today they may decide that if Zoom is at ten and the pastor is preaching at ten, they may even be listening to it or linking up to it, it's still in their pajamas. People are, will become so poor in managing their, their time. And that has an impact on how their development, their personal development and growth becomes. There's less collaboration. Now you can do, I mean, individualism is what is going on now because the relationship is such that it is better to be alone than to be with other people because you don't know who has the disease and who is going to let you contract. So the motivation of people to do things is even minimal and networking has become a problem because sometimes you want to sustain your network by having personal contact with them. Then there is the ugly. So the new normal has produced the good, the bad, and the ugly. And when you talk about the ugly, you are looking at, you know, today, communalism has given way to, to, to individualism. People have become more individualistic because naturally, I mean, if more contact you have with people, the likelihood of you getting, you know, the disease. Why would people want to congregate? Why would people want to be communal? People now start thinking, even in a home, sometimes you have people who want to keep to themselves in their rooms because they feel that it is safer to be alone. And all that we are saying is that stay at home, stay at home. So obviously the, 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 the ailment, the pandemic, the, the new normal is creating an ugly situation where communalism, supporting each other, being each other's keeper is giving way in, to individualism. And there's loneliness and boredom for some people. If you are somebody who lives alone and today in this situation, you have to face you know, that kind of isolation. People can be driven into depression because of boredom. There are people who are facing anxieties of unknown. There are people who are suffering all kinds of abuse domestic abuse in their homes. And when they have to be home alone, they are thinking of how they can survive that abuse. And you know, boundary defining relationships where people now want to define how you can, you know, how they can relate to you because they can't be sure of you. And so our cultural values are declining. And so this is the contest. This is the kind of picture I want to paint as what the new normal is doing for us. And so beyond the pandemic, if we still have to go along with this new normal, then how can we ensure that we develop strategies that will promote our, our personal growth and development? And so I'm saying that, look, the situation is what it is. We don't have to be consumed by it. We don't have to throw our hands in despair and say that, you know, uh, life has come to an end, but we have to run with a new normal. And how do we run with a new normal? This is what we are going to do we need to have strategies that will support us in our personal growth and development. The first thing that we need to do as part of our strategy is to mark out our vision milestones. What it means is that everybody needs to have a vision, your vision beyond the pandemic. Because if you had a vision, let's assume you had a vision for the year 2020 and beyond, and your vision as at 1st January, I can assure you that if you are still living in that 
vision, then you are living in another world because the pandemic would have affected and impacted your vision. And you need to reorganize your thoughts around that vision and map out your new milestones where you can arrive at, you know, the, the tweaked vision. Be responsible for your actions. If you don't have your vision set out and you think that it is somebody's responsibility, whether you think it's the government's responsibility or the church's responsibility or your, your company's responsibility, your family's responsibility, then you are not being responsible because each and every one of us, as part of your growth, you need to take your life into your own hand, map out that vision you have, give yourself the milestones, how you are going to you know, run through and journey through that vision, even after the pandemic. Take advantage of that new normal, because we have said that the new normal is not just ugly, it's not just bad, there is the good, there is the benefit. How are we taking advantage of that new normal, which we are going to live by anyway, even beyond the pandemic? How are we going to take advantage of that and make sure that you always have a positive visibility? You should not isolate yourself to the point where you are just lost. I mean, there are all these webinars going on, all these Zoom meetings, etc. Make sure that you take advantage of, of that because you're going to learn one or two things, even as we will do today. And then by that, we'll be able to take advantage of how we shape up our vision and still survive and still be relevant even after the uh, pandemic. Then one of the other one of the strategies is to focus on your skills and your talents. Today, the situation is such that we may not fully, fully go back to the traditional way of working because remote working, for instance, has a lot of advantages. And so if you do not build on your skills, if you do not sharpen your sword, if you do not try to unearth and discover your talents to be able to, 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 to use that to your advantage, then you could be having a challenge because if you want the best talents who can do certain jobs for you and you still have financial issues, you are going to get people who can multi-skill, people who can do more than just one thing at the time. So whatever skill that you have, sharpen it, especially your skill in technology, make sure that you have acquired more knowledge. The knowledge that you had yesterday, the knowledge that you had before the pandemic might not survive beyond the pandemic. And so focus on your skills, acquire more knowledge, and sometimes you can even turn your hobbies into cash cows. Your hobbies can now be what to be delivering cash for you. And so look at what you can do and focus on those talents. Build and sharpen the skills and unearth your talents in entrepreneurship. If you are the kind who have ideas about entrepreneurship, don't think that just sitting and looking for a job is what will make you survive after the pandemic. By you becoming an employer, it's more likely to let you survive. And invest in your network. When we talk about network, we are talking about professional influential relationships that are going to be helpful for you. Going between, I mean, now and even beyond the pandemic, you need to know that your network it's your net worth, how much you are worth, how much you are valued, the value that you can place on yourself, you know, especially in the career and corporate world, you know, it's how much the kind of network that you have, the kind of professional relationships and contacts that you have. Place that value on yourself. Place value on yourself because when you have no value on yourself, others will put the value on you. And when you allow people to va put value on you, they will put value that they think you deserve. But maybe you deserve more than that. And so your professional contacts are very crucial. And you can be sure that you can sustain this when you are building trust and respect within your network. You need to be respected within your network. And respect doesn't just come by demanding it. It comes out of trust. It comes out of what you, know, you can also give back to that network. Because remember that in your professional network, everybody is investing into it. And therefore, everybody expects a return on that investment. And so you need to contribute to that network so that you can gain the trust and the respect that will help you. And you can tap into the knowledge and expertise of other people within the network. And you see, so it's important that you find the group that will keep, you, keep challenging you a group of people who can keep impacting on you so that through the challenge that you receive from your professional network, you're also able to challenge yourself beyond the normal, beyond what you think your capabilities can take you and then get to, to you know, fit into 
the strategies that we are all developing beyond you know, the pandemic. Again, maintain social media professionalism. And I'm very, very concerned about this, especially for young people today. We are all on social media. Social media is driving the world and it is driving everything that we do. But honestly, if you want to have strategies that will ensure that you grow and you develop, you need to be very mindful of your social media professionalism. How do you create your social media to be professional? It is not about going on social media and being nude, saying things that are unpalatable, unprintable, getting into relationships and things that are not helpful. Because even if you want a job today, I can tell you that people get jobs through LinkedIn. People get jobs through their Facebook contacts, et cetera. If I went to your Facebook right now and I go to your page, what am I going to see there? What kind of person am I going to see? What kind of image am I going to see? Is it professional enough for me to say that in spite of, you know, whatever talents you have, I still want you to join my business? And what kind of professionalism are you bringing to your social media, you know, brand? And so promote your accomplishments in a professional way. Not anyhow. Don't think that what I do today has no effect on what I do tomorrow or who I become tomorrow. It has a lot of effect because now there's a lot of people, there are a lot of people with the same talents that you have. And if we have that pool and you want to select from anything that can help you with shortlisting to get the right kind of person who has the professionalism, who has the talent, who has the skill, and who has the right image and the brand that will support the company brand. That is what we are looking for. And if I go into your social media today, and it is all kinds of, you know, things that are, that are you, you don't even want to talk about, showcasing everything that you don't have to showcase, all in the name of, you know, be, it's been an in thing, then you have a problem. You cannot strategize to develop and grow, you know, uh, uh, in, this, in this situation. Maximize your participation in meetings and in groups. Make sure that your voice is heard. And of course, you must be able to read, to have knowledge so that you can contribute to the discussion. You can contribute to the conversation. After the pandemic, like we are saying, there is the need for survival, especially in the corporate world. There is the survival instinct of everyone that is going to be sharpened. And if you cannot, if you'll be lost in meetings, if you'll be lost in the group, then obviously you'll be lost totally. I, I have said that one of the things you need to do to make sure that you are strategizing is positive visibility, making sure that you are visible positively, not negatively. And so learning to be an expert where you can speak and be part of a meeting and a group is important. And so you think and act ahead of issues. Don't wait for issues to reach you before you start thinking and acting. You are likely to make mistakes. So be more proactive than reactive. And that should be a strategy you need to adopt. Think beyond the pandemic. And that is basically why we are here. We are saying that beyond the pandemic, how do I strategize to grow? And so it means that one of the strategies, one of the key things that you have to start working on is letting your mind start working towards a situation beyond the pandemic. Don't be glued to just the situation of today. And because when you do that and tomorrow comes and the pandemic is no more, getting yourself ready will be too late because others would, others would have, you know, just gone far ahead of you. And so you need to understand that after the pandemic, it's likely that resources will never outweigh our challenges. Even today, the resources you have will never outweigh the challenges. And so how are you going to deal with the challenges that come your way? Can you even anticipate some of the challenges so that you can start working towards what do I do if I'm faced with this kind of challenge? Don't be risk averse. Don't be afraid of risk. Of course, you have to take risk calculated, having alternatives just in case, you know, the first adventure that you take does not succeed. But you do not run away from risk. Everything in this world is risky. I can assure you that even putting food in your mouth to swallow is risky. And so even sleeping is risky. Anything, walking down the street is risky. So if you do not want to take risk and you become risk averse, then you cannot venture into the odds. And the situation demands that you have to venture into, into the odds because the odds will right be there. You have to venture in. So when you start thinking right from today, 
you start thinking beyond the pandemic, then you have the tools that will take you to the life after the pandemic so you can grow and you can develop. The same way that you got here will not let you win the battles. We are in a battlefield. The world is a battlefield and you must be able to think and choose your battles. It's not every battle that you want to fight. It is not every battle that you may win, but at the end of the day, you must win the war. The many battles become, you know, come to, together to, to, to end up as a, in the war. And so if you win your battles, then you can win eventually the war. You cannot expect that when you fail in one battle, when you lose in one battle, then you have to go sleep. When that is what you do, then really the enemy can take advantage of you. You cannot win any more battles. You cannot win the war. But when you even slip, make sure that you are bringing yourself up. And that is when you are thinking beyond the pandemic, knowing that the challenges that are ahead of us are likely to be more than the resources that will be available for us. And so how do I manage and, and utilize the resources that will be available for me either today or tomorrow to be able to tackle the challenges of you know uh, the beyond the, the pandemic? Keep your eyes and your mind and your hands to catch you know, the early bed. It is only those who are focused those who are ready, those who have a mindset to catch the early bird that will actually catch it. Because you may be standing there, you may be you know, walking around with your friends, with your colleagues, and you, know, you are just looking without focusing. When the bird is passing by, you cannot even see the bird. When that opportunity is passing by, you cannot see that opportunity. You cannot grab it. And then you find yourself in a situation that will not help you in your growth. Be a leader, not a follower. Always think of how do I do, be the first to try and do this so I can get others along. And it's important that after the pandemic, there will be a lot of that survival, as I've said. And if you try to always be a follower, you might not win the race. Question your circumstances. It is a key strategy for personal growth. Question your circumstances. Ask yourself, why? Why am I where I am? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why do I think this is how I must do it? And then you find answers to your why. If you don't ask yourself the questions, the whys, you may never you know, profess any answers. And the day you are faced with answering the why, you realize that you are found wanting. Know the what. What are you doing? Why are you, you know, what are you doing? What is this project all about? You have a dream. What is that dream? What is that dream? There are people who think that, oh, I have a vision. Oh, I, I know what I want to do. But they cannot put it together. They don't know the what. If you ask them the what, they will give you a tall list of sentences and phrases, and they cannot put it together. You need to identify what your project is, what your dream is, if you want personal growth. Then define the how. Now that you know why you have to do what you are going to do, now that you know what you want to do, you need to identify how you can do it. So how do you journey on? After the pandemic, you want personal growth, you want to develop. How are you going to journey on? How are you going to do that? And then identify where you are. And is it necessary that where I am today is going to limit me if I continue to be where I am, it's going to limit me beyond the pandemic to be able to develop. If that is the answer, then I need to identify that where should I be so that I can, it can supplement and it can you know, add on to my how, my what, and my why. So you ask yourself where I am. Is it, is it satisfying? Is it, is it you know, complete? Or it cannot help me to move on. If not, then you have to start thinking, where do I want to be to be able to carry out that dream, to be able to carry out that project? Because now I've identified my why, my what, my how. So the where needs to be supportive. And in doing that, you map out your when. The when is the process, the milestones that we talked about. Now that I know how I want to be, how I want to journey on, when do I take every step? And how do I evaluate the steps I take so that I know when to make the next move? Question your circumstances. And that is one of the strategies that we need to identify. Learn to save. Learn to save. So learn to save the little monies that come in your hand because it is important for you to understand that the little monies that come today, it's what grows into the big monies that we see tomorrow. 
Don't think that any person who is supposed to be rich today just, you know, uh, uh, became rich after waking up, you know, one day. No, you have to start thinking of this, this situation. There are people who are finding it very difficult to survive. Obviously, we can understand that, you know, the pandemic knocked at our door when we all least expected it. But indeed, if we had had this mentality or this strategy of keeping not what, you know, is left after you have spent, but keeping what you know you must save before you spend. Then in a situation of this nature, we will know that we have something to live on. And so let it be a strategy that when you want to grow, it, is, it, it means a lot in terms of sometimes financially you have to spend because you have to spend to acquire knowledge. Now we are lucky that maybe you are not paying anything and we are sitting here and we are sharing. It is very good, but you, you actually pay to acquire knowledge you pay to survive in certain circumstances. And therefore, if you start the habit of saving right now as a strategy of development and growth, it will make you more comfortable in the future. So it is important as a strategy that you spend on your need and not on your want. There is a difference between a need and a want. What you need is so crucial. It is for survival. It is something that you must necessarily have. Spend on that when you have a saving mentality. Don't spend on your wants. I want this, I want that. It may not add to anything. It may not be part of your, 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 your vision, but it is just a nice to have. This is not a time that you spend on nice to have. This is the time that you spend on need because you are better off saving what you spend on your want for a better future tomorrow. Take risk, but have alternatives, as I've said, and live within acceptable, acceptable means so that the rainy days will not scare you. Live within your means so that tomorrow you will not be scared because it is rainy, because you do not have the same abilities, because you do not have the same opportunities. If you have saved towards the rainy day, then the rains when they come will not scare you. And that is a strategy, learn to save. Avoid procrastination. That is the next you know, a pillar of strategy. Don't lose your sense of time. Some people in this pandemic, some people in their life have lost their sense of time. I mean, if within the pandemic, let's assume that you are working from home. Let's assume that, you know, you are on leave, a long one for that matter. And therefore, you wake up at nine. You don't even take your shower. You have your breakfast. You sit around. You chat. You, let me tell you, you are losing your sense of time. And therefore, even the right things that you should take advantage of, things that you should take these moments to take care of, you are procrastinating. And when you procrastinate, you have lost your sense of time. The day beyond the pandemic, you wouldn't know how to gather yourself once again to take advantage of what the situation you know, will be for you. So don't lose your sense of, your sense of time Avoid procrastination because time is an essential commodity that you cannot stretch. You have no opportunity to stretch time between to be beyond 24 hours. You cannot store time. You have no opportunity to say that I will keep my 24 hours. I'll keep some if I didn't spend all today. I spent only maybe 18 hours. So I'm going to uh, you know, take the six hours I didn't utilize today and add it to tomorrow so I can get 30 hours tomorrow. That is not possible. So you cannot store time, neither can you stop time. You cannot say that, yes, what I'm doing right now is, 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 is irrelevant, actually, I don't need to spend time on it. So I'm going to put a stop to my time so that you know I can utilize it when I want it. The fact that you turn your watch off doesn't mean that time has stopped. And so make sure that you are actually not procrastinating because time is no more money, as we have always said. Time has moved from money to life. And so if you lose time right now, you are not only losing money, you're actually losing life. Because any single moment that you lose, a part of your life is going away. And you are better off strategizing to avoid procrastination so that you can utilize every moment of your time. And in that case, you'll be able to make the best out of your time. And beyond the pandemic, your growth you're talking about, your development, will come to pass the way you want it. So you need to be productive. Don't spend your time doing unnecessary things. Don't, don't spend your time postponing the things that you can do today. And don't always say that there is a tomorrow because tomorrow doesn't belong to you. 
don't eat and drink and have all the fun because tomorrow will come and tomorrow will take care of itself. That is not in your power. What you have today is to be productive so that you can make sure that at least when God grants you tomorrow, you can survive in what he has granted you. Where there is a will, there is always a way. And so there is nothing like I don't have time. When you stop what you are doing, you will have time for the better things that you should be doing. What other strategy are we talking about? And I'm saying here that look for the gold in the rock. That might be your strategy, your thinking. Look for the gold in the rock. The gold is not on the streets for you to see. Precious minerals are not just found anywhere. Precious minerals are in, in, in rocks, in rocks. And you have to have that ability and that focus and the mindset to say, I am going out to look for it. I find the rock and I need extra strength and capabilities to be able to lift that rock, to turn the rock and to be able to hit the rock till I find the treasure that I'm looking for, till I find the gold. It takes sacrifice, it takes hard work, it takes resilience to be able to hit the rock to find the gold. If you are looking for the gold, you are looking for personal growth, you are looking for development, you are looking for success, you are looking for corporate you know, success just on the streets, just at the peripherals, you know, just as antecedents to the things that you do. I'm, I'm, I can assure you, you won't find it. It is right there in that hard rock that you have to crack to be able to find it. So dream big and visualize your success and seek to make it real. Look at the, big, the bigger picture first and then go into the details. Have your bigger vision, then start working towards your, your details. That is where I say, question your circumstances when you have the vision and sacrifice. You must sacrifice because sacrifice will be able to produce service. If you are not prepared to sacrifice, you cannot you cannot be, be, be successful because even hitting that rock till you find the gold, you must sacrifice something. Perhaps that is the time you would have sat down to chat with your friends. That is the time you would have slept, but that is the time you are using to crack that rock so you can find the gold. And so when you sacrifice and you, you are able to you know, produce a service and then you are stimulated and that is what give birth to great outcomes. Anybody that you find successful, let them tell you their story. Let the people that you call your role models, let them tell you how they got to where you think that they can role model you today. There's been a lot of sacrifices, a lot of burning of midnight candle, a lot of service that have been delivered, a lot of stimulation that you know you have to put together to be able to get the outcomes that you see today. When people tell you their story, you will know that it is more beyond the, the, the glory that you see. There is always a story behind the glory that you see. And that story is about sacrifice, it's about hitting hard the rock so that you can find the gold that is buried, you know, in the bottom of the rock. And that is a strategy you must adopt. Self-motivation is key. Look, it's important that you believe in yourself. Tilt towards more intrinsic motivation than extrinsic. Extrinsic motivation is when you are, you are motivated to do things through, you know, money, tangible things. Um, okay, if you do this, I'll give you this money. If I work hard, I can get that. And therefore, the motivation, it is, it is transient. It is tangible. So when you lose that motivation, if I, I said I'll give you money and I don't give you money, then you are not able to even deliver the best outcomes again. And so people get into jobs and they cannot succeed because, well, I have done this and I always go to work early and I'm the one who does all these reports, but you know, uh, I haven't been promoted. Yes, maybe that is a problem, but I can assure you that if those are the things and therefore I won't do it again, I won't even, you know, they will say, I won't kill myself. I won't go to work early. Those things that you forget to do or you refuse to do because you are used to extrinsic motivation, those things, because now you have stopped doing the things that you said you were motivated to do because of the extrinsic motivation and you know, tangible things, now that is going to drain you and you cannot move ahead. But when you have intrinsic motivation, intrinsic, it's within you. So you are self-motivated, you, you have a self-drive. The things that I'm sure the saints are doing, 
I, I, I believe that it is not money that they are getting in return, but there's an intrinsic motivation, something that drives them to say that this is what we want to do for other youth. This is what we want to do for other people. So take advice, analyze the advice and pick out what works for you. Remember one size doesn't fit all, but when you refuse to take advice from people who can give you the advice that you need, know that people who are experts in what you are looking for, your parents are good opportunities for you to make you know some of these things work for you and you'll be able to you know uh, be motivated never underrate that the power that you have and then be tech savvy it is important to be technology savvy and also people oriented so know how technology can work for you beyond the covid make sure that that is the new order and you are working with it but it's important that People know how to relate with people as well, because when you appreciate relationship, then you are making an invitation or inviting people to support you in your personal growth. Your personal branding is not an option anymore. Keep yourself in a good stead. Be a very skillful communicator and then make sure that your appearance will dictate your mood. Speak the language. That's language of appearance. Let your appearance dictate your mood. When you look awful, your mood will be awful and it will affect your, your branding. The right blend of sophistication and simplicity will produce the soundness and your values, you must be able to stand up to your values. Your actions will breed your consequences. Take responsibility for your actions. Stop the blame game. Nobody is responsible for your, your, the consequences of your actions. And then the, your wrong attitude will actually produce wrong decisions. So if you want to grow and develop, make sure that you are open to ideas and this will help you. And finally, it's important for us to know that we create a self-worth. So this is something that I develop as what I call the triangle of self. Be aware of who you are. Be honest with your own assessment of yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What opportunities are available for you to take advantage of? What are the threats that are you know, staring at your face? And then evaluate yourself. So your self-awareness and then your self, you know, a, a honest way of assessing yourself, then your self-evaluation will give you your self-worth. And that self-worth will create the worth, the self-worth that you must have. And on that note, I'll say that these are some of the strategies that we can adopt beyond the pandemic into the future. And that I can assure you will help you to personally grow and develop and whatever dream that you have, you should be able to, to have that with God being our helper. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. and Sister Legend and Bartini. God bless you so much for your presentation. I'm excited that you were able to talk about the whole new normal that we are facing right now, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly, the challenges that are going to come with it, and then how we are supposed to equip ourselves to make sure that we fit in into the new normal, where you spoke about mapping out, uh, mapping out our milestones, as well as increasing our networking, and then maintaining social media presence so that we know what is going on, so that we can both equip ourselves to do what is necessary. So we'll go on to our next speaker. But before that, if you have any questions and contributions, please um, direct them to the, the um, chat room. You can direct them to the chat room so that when it's time for um, us to answer our questions, we'll do very well to address each and everyone's question. So we'll move on to our next speaker. He is um, Professor Robert Osebonsu. So he's, um, the, he's the Professor of Systematic Theology and PhD Program Director at the Adventist University of Africa in Kenya. He's a specialist in religion and education. So he's a former pro vice chancellor of Valley University. And then he's here to share with us his ideas and his thoughts on how to move beyond this pandemic. Thank you very much, bro. Please, you can take over now. Thank you very much for this opportunity to be part of this uh, discussion. I'm very happy to be here, and I pray the good Lord that he will continue to guide us in this 
discussion. I also want to thank Dr. Ajeni Boaten for the presentation she just did. I think she has said it all, <laughs> uh, but I still need to say something. But thank you very much, ma'am, for the presentation. It was very comprehensive and we thank God for that. Beyond pandemic, strategies for personal growth and development. I want to begin by turning to the psalmist, Psalm 91 verses 1 to 7. Psalm 91 verses 1 to 7, the psalmist says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, for the plague that destroy at midnight. Like 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Amen. That is the hope and assurance we have as Christians, even in the midst of this pandemic, when we don't know what to do, we have the assurance from Almighty God that we can trust him, we can depend on him, and therefore we need not be afraid. A question of interest on the mind of everyone is how will coronavirus change the world? We all believe that the world will never be the same after COVID-19. Every aspect of social life, including private and public life, will be affected. Somehow we cannot tell the exact kind of change, but surely there is going to be change, which has already started. There is the need for every one of us to start preparing for the world of post-COVID-19, and the preparation should not be left to institutions alone. There is the need for personal preparation for growth and development. Coronavirus has affected every facet of our day-to-day -day life. Millions of the world population are without work and are struggling to make ends meet. Many students are currently studying online. The virus has affected military readiness, the oil market, and even the operation of terrorist organizations have been affected. Coronavirus has taken our lives, time, means, economies. It has demonstrated its power and authority over class, culture, and commerce. It is an established and humbling fact that one tiny virus can upset companies, lives, churches, communities, counties and countries. The impact has been devastating, but do not dwell so much on the effects. Do not be frustrated about it. Instead, we have to be hopeful and ask ourselves, what can we do? What can I do after the pandemic? For the optimist, every adversity is an opportunity for personal growth. If you are optimistic, that is what you should see that you need to look at how you can develop yourself. David was right when he spoke in Psalm 42, verse 11. He says, I ask myself again, why am I so sad and upset? I must wait patiently for God to help me. Then I will praise my God once again because he is the one who saves me. Maybe you are sliding down on the self-pity, self pity self Fragration slope, catch yourself up. Hope in the Lord. As a child of God, you need to find time reading and meditating upon the word of God in times like this. We need to energize yourself by following good health advice, be good to others, be abreast with current events, utilize resources to be worthy, wise and holy, and pray continuously whether you feel it or not. What are some of the needs? for brass, or what can we do? There is a concept that is known as the anti-fragile attitude or anti-fragile attitude. You know, when you look at the word anti-fragile, it was coined by a man called Nassim Talib. 
in his book, Antifragile, Things That Gain From Disaster. To understand the word antifragile, we can illustrate it with a Greek mythological creature who is called Hydra, who has numerous heads. And the story is that Hydra, with all the many heads, when one head is cut off, two more will grow back in its place. So just think about this concept. Talib says that some things benefit from shocks. They strive and grow when exposed to volatility, randomness, disorder, and stresses, and love, adventure, risk, and uncertainty. Yet in spite of the ubiquitous nature of the phenomena, there is no way for the exact opposite of fragile. Let us call it anti-fragile. Anti-fragility is beyond resilience or robustness. The resilient resists shock and stays the same. The anti-fragile gets better. Anti-fragile is not the same as the term resilience, which has to do with the capacity to overcome failure. Or not the same as toughness, ability to defy or to head off failure. We are told that anti-fragility means the ability to thrive and be better as a result of stresses, shocks, volatility, mistakes, faults, attack, or failures. Thus, after going through challenges, the anti-fragile attitude is that you will emerge wiser, tougher, better as a result of it. It is like saying, when I fall, I will rise up stronger. That is what we need to develop in times like this. You know, Nassim said that complex systems are weakened, even killed, when deprived of stresses. I believe this pandemic should serve as our anti-stresses, to project our lives to new weights and heights. That is what we need to do. Fragile implies something that is easily damaged by stress or disorder. Robust is not the exact opposite of fragile. When something is robust, it is able to withstand stress better than when it is fragile. Thus, as we face post-COVID or coronavirus, we need to remember that it is bad to be fragile in our outlook. It is good to be robust or resilient, but the best approach is to be anti-fragile. We need to be anti-fragile in our personal and social outlook. This can be accomplished through stronger and faster suitable training. The amount of training we engage in must be challenging enough beyond your present capabilities or capacities. You need to expose yourself to variations in stress types to develop a broader set of strength, according to Tali. From the biblical perspective, what can we say when we talk about being anti-fragile or developing the anti-fragile attitude? Joseph, when he had experience with his brothers when he was sold into Egypt, when the brothers saw him and they met him and they were expecting him to complain or to be you know, agitated or angry with them, Joseph said, you meant it for evil against me, but God meant it for good. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. COVID-19 might be evil, might be something that may lead to trouble or whatever, but you can take advantage of it and turn it around. It was Paul's anti-fragile attitude that urged him to say, chains and tribulations are with me, but none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Christ had the same anti-fragile inclination when he said to them, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. John chapter two, verse 19. So amid COVID-19 or coronavirus, we ought to have the spiritual anti-fragile mindset like Paul, who could say, I am persuaded that neither life nor death or whatever can separate me from the love of God. Job also demonstrating anti-fragility was able to say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. 
Job chapter 13, verse 15. How are you approaching the current challenges? That is what we need to look at now. You may be experiencing mis emotions, sadness, disappointment, grief, devastation, despair, stress, anxiety, helplessness, hopelessness, frustration, anger, are just a few of the emotions we feel in response to this unprecedented disruption of our lives. But rather than resisting negative emotions, be kind and empathic to yourself and to others. Listen to and reflect the feelings that are there. Allow yourself to go through the five stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Number two, take time to assess the situation. You need to put the COVID-19 crisis in perspective. First, acknowledge its existence. What will be the long-term effect on you? Although life will return to normal, but when? Consider the bigger picture. COVID-19 is now part of our lives, but it is not life itself. There are likely good. Can you actively identify both the short and long-term effects of COVID-19 on your life? Well, the next point is accept the current situation. We need to understand that COVID-19 crisis is here for a while and we have little control over it or its solution. So by the time it goes, the financial implications may be devastating and will last for years. What is important is how we respond to it. How are we going to approach it? Is our response going to be positive, negative, or are we going to be indifferent? You can turn the current situation to something positive. Do not be a victim. Instead, create something beneficial out of this situation. Next, consider the crisis as a challenge to overcome. You need to reorient yourself in a more constructive way so that your life through this crisis will be rewarding. You should be better off at the end of the crisis than you were before. Next, consider the crisis as an opportunity. You know, President, former President of the United States, John F. Kennedy once noted, he said, when written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters. One represents danger and the other represents what? Opportunity. So when there is crisis, there is danger, there is also what? Opportunity. So the crisis can be negative or positive subject to what you see in it. A crisis or an opportunity. You can concentrate on the gains you can make out of it or the loss you will suffer. Let us focus on what can be gained out of this crisis. Have a positive attitude. When bad things such as COVID-19 crisis happen, it is easy for, to have a pity party crying, woe is me, I have lost my job, I have lost this, I've, this has happened to me, and dwell on everything that is now missing in our lives, or that we have lost in some cases for good. Be optimistic and positive and approach the challenge with confidence. Generate positive emotions. One of the best protections against being overwhelmed by the negativity caused by the COVID-19 crisis is to generate positive emotions in your life actively. Let us be honest. We are not happy with what is happening, but we need to strengthen ourselves. We need to develop positive outlook out of it. So in spite of the awful nature of the pandemic, some good may come out of it. The current pandemic, in spite of how it has affected us and all those stuff, we need not worry. We need some guidelines. And I read something from a, a guy from Ghana, Thomas Opon. He wrote an article, which is so interesting. First of all, we need to re-examine our priorities. What are the priorities you have in your life? Your worldview. What are your value system? It is time for us to have this post-virus mindset and strategies. It is time for us to make up our mind that we are going to be living with COVID-19. We will be entering the normal world, as Mama said, of work and intermingling with others soon. But what can we do out of it? We need to re-examine our priorities. On the spiritual side, can you list areas of growth in your Christian life? 
Have you experienced God's knowledge, will, and wisdom during this period? Are you at peace with yourself and anyone you know? Romans chapter 12, verse 18. Are you advancing in your Christian life, increasing in endurance, patience, and hope in God and his providence and care? Romans 6, 3 to 5. Colossians 1, 9 says, you should be grateful for the progress you have made and determined to make through the power of the almighty God, even in this crisis. You also need to know yourself because the unexamined life is not worth living. Understand who you are. And if you know who you are, it will be very important for your progress in life. When we say know yourself, it means have an understanding of our feelings, motivations, thinking pattern and tendencies. These give us a stable sense of self will and a secure grip on our values and motivation. What kind of person are you? What brings you joy? Self-knowledge offers you the path to greater happiness and fulfillment. Get out of your own comfort zone. John Vanier, a Canadian philosopher and theologian says, he who clutches desperately to friends, family, no longer lives. More than security, life needs adventure, risk, dynamic activity, self-giving, presence to others. So challenge yourself. Get out of your comfort zone. Don't think you had a job, you were okay, you were doing okay. And so you are crying, you are, you know, doing all sorts of things to yourself. Get up and see what you can be, you can do. You are being challenged and you got to wake up and see what can come out of it. Find out the purpose of your life. Are you living a purposeful life? What do you do that brings you satisfaction in your life? You should have a passion. And this is the good time to develop that passion. Writing, sharing views online, learning a language, an online project, learning instrument or designing. Learn something. This is the time for you to learn something. We are wiring away in the house. Find a reason to live more than just the reason to make a fortune and accumulate work. Broaden your horizon and develop various skills in life. For great internal good comes from the pursuit of meaningful projects. That is what we need to know. Victor E. Frankel, a Nazi concentration camp advisor wrote in his book, Man's Search for Meaning. He says, those who have a why to live can bear with almost any how. Those who have a why to live can bear with almost any how. So whatever you are going through, if you know why you are alive, if you know why you exist, you can capitalize on it and get something out of it. Pay attention to the details. Daniel Kahneman, an influential psychologist, defines happiness as what I experience here and now. We, some of us are so busy in life that we ignore the little things in life that can make us happy. We spend much time worrying about the past or living the future in fear. When life is intense, you lose a sense of the present moment and worry too much about what is ahead of you. The little things around you can help you reap meaning in life to make you happy. An effective route to happiness is not necessarily through experiencing major events that we might have planned out, such as getting married, moving houses, getting the all-important promotion, or even being on a holiday. William Glenn says, rather it is small and often unexpected pleasures in life that can make us smile each and every day to help us build happier and more meaningful lives for ourselves and for others. People, not things, make us happy. So be happy with yourself and know the people, build relationship, Good and meaningful social relationships are the most consistent predictors of happy life. Good relationships keep us happier and healthier. So you need to keep good relationship. Remind yourself to take a break. Maybe it is time for you to take a rest, to sit down, relax a bit. Some of you have been very busy working up and down. This is the time also for you to relax and start thinking and looking about yourself and repositioning yourself. Someone said, I have noticed a rise in my practice uncertainly over the last three to five years of people finding it increasingly difficult to switch off 
and relax. And it is across the lifespan from the age 12 to 70. We need to learn and practice relaxation, even in times like this. Reorient yourself. Reorient your thinking about COVID-19 crisis towards being an opportunity. As long as the crisis lasts, you can adjust your life goals to work within a state of new normal. You can see the loss of regular life as a chance to focus on other aspects of your life that have been neglected because you have been too busy to address them. You can identify areas you want to work on or improve in your life and focus on developing these areas. You can use this break from normal life to seek balance in your life and pursue aspects of your life that you didn't have time for before the crisis. Example, enjoying a hobby that has been neglected, trying something new and different, exercising more. That, those are things you can do. You can create new structures and routines in your life around school, work, daily activities, and your social life. When you don't succumb to a victim mentality, you face hopelessness and helplessness and increase your sense of competence, feeling of control and optimism. I encourage you to seek out love, caring and empathy from your family and your friends. Find fun, joy, excitement and contentment in your daily activities. Be safe, be calm, be positive. This is one thing you can spread that will help people be physically and psychologically healthier. How do we reflect over all of this? in the midst of COVID-19 lockdown. Try to work at your most productive energy hours of the day. You know very well the period of the day that you are very productive. Utilize it. Is it early morning, midday, or late evening? Utilize your peak hours and get the best out of it. Always remember to begin your day with prayers through devotion and good intentions. For variety, take sprouts up the place you work in the house to increase your productivity. Clean up or rearrange your workplace. Use technology differently. Change your furniture, move things in order to be sure that you are changing your perspective and outlook. Be creative. It is time for you to freshen up your loot because when you dress well, it affects your productivity. It is time to start thinking of new plans, purpose, passion points, projects, and principles to live by. It is good to use your in time to excel. It is good to move around the house every hour, walking, exercising, whatever number of steps you want to take every day. Are you meeting the target or are you lagging behind? It is time to work on the things you have put on the to-do list for a long time. Get them done during this period. This is the time you can use to improve yourself by engaging in prayers, writing, online classes, certification, degree, skill development, and courses. This is the time for you to take advantage of. As you engage in all of this, you need to prioritize your family, your friends, even your enemies. Get good sleep. Emphasize health objectives. Be nice to people. Love your God more deeply during this period and desire heaven passionately. Be filled and not frustrated. Ellen White says, we are coming to the crisis. Let us stand the test manfully, grasping the hand of infinite power. God will work for us. We have only to live one day at a time. And if we get acquainted with God, he will give us strength for what is coming tomorrow. Grace sufficient for each day. And every day will find its own victories, just as it finds its trial. So this is what we have. This crisis, I can say, has reminded us of our inherent weaknesses. We aren't as strong or as wise or as smart as we thought we were. This invincible enemy has brought us to our knees. 
But we will gain from that if going to our knees calls us to turn to God or to take advantage to improve ourselves. On the night before his crucifixion, Jesus gave this remarkable promise to his disciples. He said, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Jesus didn't say, I have overcome your trouble, but rather he says, I have overcome the world. Our Lord is telling us, don't worry, I have your back. At the moment, we are, some of us have spent three months in lockdown, in quarantine, as hard as it has been. These days can help us if we do not waste them. We will be glad we shelter or sheltered in place. If we end up thinking positively about eternal things, improving upon ourselves and helping ourselves. Trials reveal the content of every heart. Christians ought to be the calmest people on earth because we know the Lord and he holds the future in his hands. In practical sense, what should this mean for us? First, we need to return to the Lord. It is time for all of us to get serious about our Christian life. Second, we need to realize I live in fear. And Jesus has promised never to leave us. Let's live as men and women of faith. Third, we need to reaffirm our faith in Jesus' return. Remember that our hope is in the Lord, not in medicine or technology or politics. It is entirely possible. Things may get worse before they get better. Let us get ready for Jesus' soon return. And then let's make sure our friends and loved ones are ready to. Remember that to be successful, it requires taking full responsibility for your life, your choices, decisions, and actions. In order to live life fully, it requires re-evaluating your core beliefs, your worldview, your values, and philosophies of life. So when you consider the current situation we find ourselves in, coronavirus, lockdown, sickness, death, racism, tribalism, hatred, hunger, problems within, without, nothing should hold you down because through the power of Jesus, you are more than anti-fragile. In him we live and move and have our being. Let us have this in mind, even as we prepare for COVID-19. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you so much, Paul, for your presentation. Thank you very much for the perspective you have given unto us, as in how to increase our spiritual experience as we are at home during this period, and then how to find purpose during this period. I mean, we have to sit down and then self-reflect about the decisions we take now, and then how they are going to impact us and others in the future. Thank you both for your presentations. So now we'll go on, move to our questions. But before that, uh, I'll read some of the uh, commendations that came in. Yeah. Some of our um, listeners commended both speakers. So I'll read some that came in. So this one is from Edna Borden. She says, Dr. Stella Jenny Boatin, we thank God so much for preparing you very well for us, a great woman by all standards. And then that was a beautiful presentation. Thank you very much, Edna. Thank you, God bless you for joining us. And then Michael Saki also said, he's having the perspective from Prof, great personalities on the bill. Thank you very much, Michael Saki as well. And then he goes and says, we God bless our speakers. They are giving us an all encompassing domain of personal development. So I think it's very important that we had both um, perspectives coming in to help us both spiritual and then in our day-to-day -day activities as well. So we'll go on to tackle our questions now. So we have a few of them coming in. The first one, um, it says that, so I think this one goes to Dr. Mrs. H. Boating. So she mentioned that whilst we are home now, we are supposed to pay attention and then um, increase our networking as well as our social media professionalism. So her people were asking how we're going to go about that because of social media fraud and then all these things coming up. Is there an approach that we can use so that we do not look fake 
uh, asking if we want to build a network with a group of people. Is there a brand that we need to create or how can we go about it so that the people or the target group or the people we are trying to meet don't see us as though we are maybe a fraud or a fake? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, um, Oswald. So it's very important for us to understand that in trying to build your network, the professionalism we are talking about is how you present and project yourself. What kind of image are you giving of yourself on your social, uh, no, social platforms? And therefore, if you want to be friends with somebody because you want to build a network, that person is actually looking at you based on the brand that you are projecting. And so the way you look, the kind of comments that you post, the things that you are interested in, all these form your brand. And as both Prof and I have said, how you look, your appearance is important to determine the kind of mentality that you have. It's very important to determine the kind of you know, professional that you want to be. And so let us understand that in building that professional network, you need to make sure that you are giving a certain you know, brand approach to yourself. It's important that whatever you put up is displaying the kind of philosophies and values and principles that you stand for. You cannot pretend to be a Christian you know, just on Sabbath or on Sunday. And then on your social platform, when we go there, you are something else. That is where you have a friction. That is where there is hypocrisy. And that is where people will see you perhaps even as fraud. And so let us understand that in building our social network, professionalism of our brand, of our values, of our image, are all important to come together and then we'll be able to get into the right professional networks because we are assuming that you know a, a, a position that should you know give us that opportunity to enter in there so that is what we need to do and personal branding is a whole important thing that we need to continuously build people in because the brand the way you speak the way you 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 act and the way you, you, you dress up and appear equal to who you are because until somebody even knows what content you are made of, what you exude as your, your appearance and your, your communication and your brand outlook will give them or give you that brand affinity. That is what will create the stickiness between you and the people that you want to network with. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Eugenia Barton, thank you. So moving on, the next question, like I think this one goes to Prof. Osei So you spoke about um, finding purpose during this period. So someone wanted to know if, you see most people are in a lockdown at the moment. So finding a purpose, you see people have different, I mean, as God created us, he gave us a different purpose. I mean, everyone has a unique purpose in this life. So don't you think, so the person was asking if uh, being in a lockdown, might skew the purpose in a certain direction. I hope you me. guess the question. No, um, a lockdown should rather help you to find time to think and reflect and ask yourself, what is my purpose? Do you actually even know your purpose? If you don't know it, this is the time. Some, some of us, even at university, we are not sure what work do you want to do? Even the program you are in, you, you, it's like it was given to you. You know, and so this is the time for you to sit down and ask yourself, what is my purpose in life? What do I want to accomplish? What do I want to do? And then within this window where you are home, what can you do to enhance yourself? What can you do to improve yourself? I think uh, Madame said a lot about those things. What we need to do to improve ourselves. That is what is important. So ask yourself, who am I? Why am I here? What do I want to accomplish in life? What am I looking for? This is the time. You know, you don't, it's not training yourself and equipping yourself is not just only being in the classroom. You can start looking at it. There are so many certificate programs that we can do at this time. As uh, was said earlier, there are so many webinars going on. Even some of us, we are participating in the webinar almost every week. 
throughout this period, every week, sometimes I attend about three webinars. Just be there, you pick one thing, you pick something. Today you are here, you pick something that can, you know, whip your, you up to help you start something, to start doing something to help yourself. That is how you can develop. So sit down, ask yourself, what do I want to do in life? What do I want to accomplish? And by God's grace, you'll be able to get a meaningful life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. So this is a question from um, Akusua Asamoa. So her question is, during this pandemic, it seems that most people are into a specific trade or market. So how then do you come up with something unique? Because it seems we have limited resources in this period. So then how do you come up with something unique to also sell yourself in the market? Thank you, Akusia, for your question. Yes, please. So, um, Dr. Ejene Bating, I'll take your, I'll, your take on this question. Okay. So, thank you, Akusia, for that. Um, I think both of us have said the fact that this is a time to reflect and a time to understand the situation that we are in and going forward, how you are going to survive the beyond the pandemic. It is, it, it is true that at this time, there are a lot of you know, businesses or industries that have had to close down because they cannot even make ends meet, they cannot run businesses. But I think one thing I have seen with us as a people is that we don't like to broaden our horizon, especially when it comes to business. We are more towards what somebody has started and that is what everybody will get in. Let me just give you, you know, uh, just a, a, two typical examples. I just look at something like um, water, what we call, is it pure water or whatever? And one person starts, 10 people are in and everybody wants to do the same business. No, no, no innovation, no ways of thinking beyond it. And we do it the same way. Sometimes when we talk about innovation, when we when in the days of old, when there were you know very few mobile phones, what we used to call space to space, everybody gets on board the same thing. You lighten and you dilute your customer base. But when we talk about innovation, it may not always be a start of a new thing. It is good when you can think about a new thing within this pandemic and say that uh, people are looking for this. What can I do? Now people cannot go to restaurants and buy food. People, there are occasions that are still happening. How can I project and advertise something that I can do that people can, you know, I can just deliver. But you realize that on innovation, apart from the new things, the new ideas, it's even the way you are re-engineering the existing ideas. The same existing ideas, how are you, you redoing them, re-engineering, bringing in something else, trying to be more customer-centric, making sure that the customer can feel a sense of you're thinking about me in another way, in a better way. So when you do that, you are able to, to create a niche for yourself and take advantage of a certain niche you know, a, a market before others may even want to join. There are so many things going around now that people can take advantage of in the pandemic. We have talked about, you know, all these webinars, all these uh, educational materials. We are talking about people who have to work in on site or in offices. Their children are still not in school. How are we engaging them? I've seen schools that are even doing Zoom play and learning for little, little kids so that they can be engaged. What are we thinking about? This may not be very new, as in from the scratch, but you are adding on or taking out, bringing in something, re-engineering the whole process. And those are the kind of thinking. And I remember saying something like, even your hobby, your hobby can give you money in this, in, in this time. Those of you who are good with writing poetry, writing music, it is a time when you can have the peace, the reconnection with yourself to be able to do some of these things and then project them. Before you realize, after the pandemic, a, a talent that was, you know, buried, is now and it's not discovered, and you can make money out of that. You can make a whole business, a whole profession out of that. So let's be 
thinking about re-engineering our existing processes as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mrs. Jenim Barton. So um, I think I could say I'm satisfied with the answer. So we'll go on to um, a question from Ruben Kweku. And I think this one is directed to Prof. He says, how do I know myself as Prof said? How, please, can you highlight some steps to take in knowing oneself whilst in isolation? Thank you. Thank you very much. It is always important to ask yourself, who am I? Why am I here? What do I want to do? Well, as a Christian, you say you are a child of God and all those stuff. But after that, what next? What kind of things do you enjoy engaging in? What are some of the things you enjoy doing? These are the things you need to ask yourself. You know, like what uh, Dr. Adjanin Boatin just said. I had a friend who went to university, did home economics, came out, got employed by one of the telecom companies, started working there, making big money. I told her, either you upgrade yourself in the first degree that you got, get a master's degree in it, or because you are in telecom, get a master's degree in marketing or something of the sort. The person was comfortable stayed home until it got to a point she was, you know, retrenched and did not have money and has been staying home for over five years because of that. You have to take advantage of opportunities. What did you study? Are you comfortable working with it? Or after your studies, have you found out that there is something you enjoy doing? What can you do to enhance that skill? What can you do to equip yourself in that area so that you can be employed in that area? These are the things we need to be thinking about. You know, you should not say, I went to school, I studied this. This is what I know, and that's all. Always be exploring. Thinkers are inventors. It is only when you think. As ma Madam has said earlier, in Ghana, we just look at what people are doing and we copy. You see that we have so many stores lining our streets. Why is it so? Why are many people selling pure water? This one thing somebody will start. Even I remember at the university level, there were some courses we thought were innovative. We will plan these courses, we put them together, we will start the course. But before you know, every university in Ghana is doing the same course. Why is it so? That is how we are. We like copying. So when someone sits down and dreams and decides to do something, instead of people sitting down and dreaming and thinking of what they can do, they will just be copying. Today, do you know that many people are making a living on YouTube because of their abilities, because of their skills. They develop these skills, they start putting videos on YouTube, they start getting followers. And before you know, every month, they are getting huge sums of money from them. Can you imagine this? You would think it's not possible, but these are the things. We need to sit down and see which areas we can develop ourselves in, which areas we think we are effective in, we are comfortable working in, and let us venture into these areas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you so much. So there's another question coming in from Michael Saki, and he says, compromising is becoming a norm now, even in immoral and corrupt situations, to to guarantee profitable networking in recent times. So one has to be a follower without objections. So how do we maintain our uncompromising stance in such situations? Thank you. Well, let me begin by saying that we all should have worldviews. We should have values. We should have principles guiding our lifestyle. Why should I be a follower? If you have principles, if you have values, Yes, we are living in a relativistic world, a world that, you know, there are no norms. People live their own life. They do what they want. But are you going to follow them? You are a child of God. You should be different. So none of us here should be a follower. We should be different. We should know who we are. We should see ourselves as God's creation. And if I'm God's creation, then something good should come out of me. I should be able to do something better that will enhance humanity, that will enhance myself, that will help people who see me, who come in contact with me, to know that indeed this is a child of God. And so we should not compromise. We should be different. We are living in a relativistic world, but that notwithstanding, let us be different. Let us develop ourselves and equip ourselves better. Thank you very much. 
Uh, Thank you very sorry, much, Prof. Uh, sorry, Oswald, if I can just come, um, you know, add to what Prof has just said. Yes, that please. Let us, if I, I said it in my presentation that we need to take the risers to be leaders and not followers. Because like Prof said, the principles and the values that you stand for should be your principles and your values, whether you are in the day or in the night, whether you are in darkness or in broad daylight. But most of us are not able to do this because we compromise when it is dark and we want to be something else when it is day. Then you don't have a principle. And when you don't have principles, you end up being impacted by those who have principles. Remember that there is a statement that says, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. Of the world. And so we cannot take ourselves out of what is happening in, the, in our world. But you must understand who you are in that situation. In every context, let people know you and say that this man, this woman, this guy, this lady, I don't think he can do this. Or if there's something, yes, I believe that he can do this. This is all about what kind of brand that you have for yourself. And that will really determine how you can be a leader and others will follow you, or you will just be obeying the wind and following where others go, even irrespective of whether you know it, it, it will go well for you or not. So be who you are, have your values, have your brand, and be a leader, and others will be impacted by your leadership. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we have two more questions, then we can go. So Dr. Eugene Mbwati, in your presentation, you mentioned how to, we, we need to learn how to save. Is there a way you think, and maybe there are percentages we need to set with our money, or you think um, we can just go ahead and then put some aside maybe for future use? So do you suggest that we go with percentages, or there's an approach that we can use when it comes to saving our money? All right, so let me take it uh, from the point where I don't think that there's any uh, hard or fast rules about percentages. And we don't have to be pedantic to, you know, those kind of percentages. However, it is important for us to know that if you're a Christian, for instance, you know that when you take whatever income that comes to you, your tithe, your offering, they are not yours, so you must return them. And then whatever is left, like I said, there are certain basic things that you need to, to have to run your day-to-day -day activities. If you're a family person or you, you are even a single person. But outside of that, you need to know that having taken out my tithe, my offering, what do I want to, what do I decide that I want to save every time? And what is left, how do I then apportion what is left? Because I can assure you, the young people today may say that, oh, we are not making money. I mean, no, my national service money, how is it? How much is it? My salary is this. There is never a time that you are going to have resources much more than your needs. And so if you don't take advantage of that and say that the moment you take out your tithe, you take out your, your offering, take some money and put aside then whatever is left, live within that. So it is your own decision about what percentage and about what kind of future you want to build. I told, it will not be a great idea to say, put 10% aside, put 20% aside, but you know your, your activities, you know your responsibilities. Are these responsibilities necessary? And remember I talked about spending on your need and your wants. Want. Some of the things that we spend on are just wants. They are not needed. I mean, without them, we can survive and we can still live comfortably. Why do we want to spend? Because friends are spending on that. Why do we want to be like everybody because everybody is doing this? Why do you want to change your, your, your phone? Because every time that any new phone comes up, you know, I must also feel like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in there and therefore I've changed it. When you really don't have need for, couldn't you have saved that money and the little drops of water will one day make that mighty ocean that you can swim in and feel that, yes, you are comfortable. So you need to have that discipline of your tithe, your offering, then take a certain percentage out as your own decision about savings and spend the rest based on your needs and less on your wants. That will be the kind of principle you need to apply. And I mean, each person, 
maybe on one-on-one, -on -one, we can talk, I mean, about each person, if I have the opportunity, one-on-one, -on -one, we can have, know your income, know what your activity is, know what your needs and your wants, and how you can save or how much you can save. So that one size will not fit all in this matter. All right, thank, thank you. you very much. So in our final question, it says that, so due to um, uh, copyright information these days, um, how can one advertise um, his or her products so that people do not steal ideas that uh, you have brought forth? Please help you get the question. Uh, uh, I think uh, Dr. Jenny Boati will be good in that, but I will say that we have what we call patent. Whatever you are able to do, you need to get the patent for it. Register it and get a patent for it. And when you are registered and you have the patent and people start copying it, you can you know, challenge them. But sometimes you know, the people are smart that they will just add something small to it to change it a bit, but they are. That is the challenge we have. Uh, but you need to register your inventions. Whatever you have been able to produce, you need to uh, register it so that if anyone copies, you'll be. Thank you very much. Yeah. Can I can I add very quickly, um, Oswald? Um, yes, please. Yes, yes to please. say that, yes, just like Prof. Has said, one, you need to register. In fact, you need to even register your company. A lot of us are doing beautiful things. We do them in our backyards and then, you know, in our homes. And we don't think they are businesses. They are businesses. You need to register your business. Have business registration. Because there are times that even certain offers may come. And especially if you want to supply whatever you are doing to certain corporate bodies, you cannot be accepted if you are not a registered company. And so you need to register. You need to also register your patent, as we have said. But also remember that we are in a competitive world. And people will want to do little things to tweak your in original ideas so that they can also have the ideas. So you should be involved in how dynamic you can be with adding on and making, you know, because people get tired with just one, one thing and one product all the time. I mean, sometimes just bring in little things, and that's what I call the re-engineering, to make sure that you are always, you know, in the space that people are looking for. And with that, you should not be afraid of advertising because if you don't advertise your product, it will also be like you are working in the dark. Only yourself know what you are doing. Nobody else does. And when we don't know what you are doing, nobody can patronize it. And so it is in your interest that you register the business, you register you, the patent, and then you keep evolving so that you know there's dynamism around your product. And I can assure you that you'll make it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I think there's a hand that has been raised, Ruben Kweku. Um, if the uh, host can allow him to, to speak, Ruben Kweku. So, right. Ruben, you, you, okay. Please, can you hear me? Yes, please. All right. Um, I thank you, Dr. Stella, for your presentation. Please, my question is, if you're a young man, and now you've been able to recognize yourself and your abilities, and now you are to start a business or something, now, here's a case that you don't have any capital or any resource to base on. Please, what will you do to start from the scratch so that you can build yourself gradually in order to get access to your wealth or something? Okay, um, I there was a bit of an interruption, but if I got your, your question well, it's, a, it's more about how will you start, you know, um, your business, is that right? If you don't yes. have capital? Yes, yes, please. Okay, all right. Um, I think that anytime we talk about capital, uh, a lot of us have a thinking of some big money sitting somewhere that we need to have before we can do what we have to do. But when we are talking about business, your business idea will determine what type of capital that you can have. Mm -hmm. And again, you can't always have all the money that you need. 
but depending on what that's what i talk about savings depending on what little savings that you have made and then if your company is a registered company maybe you have some something that you know can support you to showcase that this is what i can do sometimes there are people who are ready to support otherwise there are little things that we can start with you don't have to you can't always start big sometimes you have to start with the little things and then based on the little things there are some things that you are doing that you don't even need so much money sometimes it's an idea that you want to sell it's not always about selling i mean it's not always about tangible products you are talking about some of you young people have brilliant ideas about you know taking some children and teaching them and making money you don't need capital to start that one but you know you talk to people today yes i'm looking for a job and i have been out of i mean i've left school for three years five years and i don't have a job and i remember sometimes even asking um have you you know uh written to a school because i believe that you have a skill that you can do this you are a french scholar people want you know to teach their children french how many parents can do that you always need somebody to come in to support you and it's like oh as for teaching dear really you don't need capital to start teaching to start you know going to people's homes and teaching their children english mathematics french and those things and science and you can make so much capital, even your vision is to set up your whatever. You make the capital out of that, delivering a service that doesn't require money in the initial stages. Those are also possible. And we need to think beyond what traditional methods of you know, entrepreneurship has taught us. All these things are entrepreneurial abilities. And when we go outside the box, we can always make the difference. So that is also uh, one of the things we can do. Thank you. Right. So I think our time is fast spent, but we'll take one more from Michael Bafo, and we can wrap up with the contributions and then final remarks from our speakers. So Michael Bafo. I think they can unmute his microphone for us. If you can unmute the microphone of Michael Bafo. Okay, thank you. He's in now. Michael. Michael. Um, okay, so I think we would have to go on now. So listen to our final remarks from our speakers. There are any final words for us and the youth so that we can achieve excellence in, in our endeavors. Yes, me. Is it any button? If you can go first. Okay, I thought Prof was going to start, but anyway. Um, so I mean, final words. I will just say that it's been it's been a beautiful um, afternoon, a beautiful Sabbath. I think we have all learned um, a lot and uh, we are happy with the questions because it shows that at least we are all ready, you know, to take up um, the challenge. But let us remember that this is our new normal. Let us remember that we have to survive in the new normal. Let us remember that our, our actions will determine our consequences and therefore that is in our hands. Let us move out with a strong conviction that when we are able to, to put across all the strategies that we've discussed, Prof and myself, and maybe others that you have learned you know, from elsewhere, remember that if you are able to be self-disciplined and you know, go along with some of these learnings, you should survive even after you know, the COVID, beyond the pandemic, because life will not be as we knew before. Things are changing. Technology is the in thing, but people rule the world. Let us remember to still network and have the right relationship. Learn from those who have the expertise and who can support you and then bring out your ideas. And when we are doing that, I believe that um, we'll be able to, to make life a lot more exciting. Our personal growth and our development will not be as, as challenging, frightening, 
and you know anxious as some of us are, are thinking thank you very much okay all right thank so you very much um, please let me i think someone wanted to make a contribution so uh, maybe i'll take that before you come in so nanama i'm on for please if you can unmute hello. your microphone and then hello you have just a few seconds to okay. make a contribution can you hear me respect. can you hear me yes please let's okay. go all right, so thank you very much, Prof and Doc, for your presentation. From all we said, what I got from it is that during this period, it's a time for us to associate ourselves with positive people. During this lockdown, it looks like everybody is alone. We should also realize that we, are not, we don't live in isolation in this world. If you really want to build yourself, achieve what you really want to achieve in life, then you have to surround yourself with positive people. Listen to people around you, take the positive ones, leave the negative ones. And also, those of us who are weak, during this period is a time for us to stretch our hands and seek for help. Don't think that um, nobody is there to help you. Maybe somebody is there to help you, but the person has not been able to identify you that you need help. And so we should also be willing to ask for help. And then those who are stronger should also help us, those who are weak. When we, we ask for help, I think in this period we need each other. And so we should pray for one another, not just the people that you know, people you don't know. We should also try and pray for other people. And I think by doing this, we can also help each other. And then by the end of this pandemic, the, the, there's going to be a change. I, I am really looking up to a day where, especially our mobile phones, like I'm thinking about, is there a day that will come that you are in town and then you run out of battery and then there's an app or there's something that you can just use to buy battery without charging your phone. I, I'm hoping that maybe somebody would take up that. It's something I've been thinking about, but I am not a science person. And so I, I, I'm sure that those of us on this platform, some of us are into the science. I'm sure maybe one day some of us will take up that challenge. And I think it will be a nice way of helping us go about our things without having to run it down. Thank you very much for the presentation. God bless you, Doug and Pro. Valley, we will miss you, Pro. So this is just one of those days. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you. So, Prof. Please so listen to us and then you can bring them into you. Close. Thank you very much. I know the time is up, but I want to say thank you very much for <coughs> thank you for the ministry you are doing. And to my co-presenter, Dr. Stella Jenny Boatin, thank you very much. This is the first time I think I'm meeting you. Well, I want to thank you very much for the presentation. What I want to say is that within this period, let us be creative and let us do it with the Lord leading and directing us, and it shall be well with us. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, thank you very much. So I think I'm uh, moving for if we can have the emails of our speakers so that if members have more questions, they can direct them to your emails. I hope that's acceptable, if they can direct um, questions and other inquiries into your emails. So we'll type them into the chat room as time goes on, or you can email at, uh, you can email any saint member you know, and then we direct you to our speakers. So thank you very much for joining us today. We are going to uh, have our closing prayer, and then we will bring the program to you. So Abena Duma Menu is going to say our closing prayer for us. Thank you. Shall we pray? Our most everlasting Father, we thank you for a beautiful day as today. Father, we thank you for our speakers. We thank you for their lives. And we thank you for helping them to impact us, impact in our lives. Father, we also thank you for everyone that, that, was, that has been able to. I think there are problems with the transmission.
Okay. So let me, okay, I think I'll say a closing prayer then. So let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much, Father, for the opportunity to study. We thank you for our beautiful um, speakers who came to us today to come and give us insights, to give us knowledge. Father, we thank you so much for what you have done for them. We pray that you continue to bless them, Father, their families, their work, everything they do, we pray that they continue to make an impact so that we can also benefit. So we pray, thank you for our listeners. Father, thank you for letting them join us so that they can also listen and then benefit and help other people as well. We commit the rest of the evening into your hands. We pray that you take preeminence. Father, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. So um, finally, I'll say uh, there's a virtual book club for the scenes coming up. So please check our websites. Uh, we will get back to everybody on that so that uh, we can all study together. So it's a virtual book club of the scenes coming up. So thank you very much for joining us. We will try our possible best to get the um, slides for everyone. We we'll speak to our speakers so that they can make them available for everyone to um, go through once again. So please, we are, we, we, should I say we are going to promise you that, but we will get the slides for you in due time. Thank you. So our um, website is www.thescenesoutreach.org www.thescenesoutreach.org. So please go there. We have content there, ranging from articles to newsletters and all that on that site. And um, pictures from our other programs, our quizzes that we organize, we have all those ones present as well. So please um, make the time to go there and then um, enjoy our content. Thank you very much for joining us today. But please, if you have any inquiries, you can direct them to us so that we can direct them to our um, speakers for today, or we can share their mails for you so that you can direct your inquiries to them. Thank you very much. Please have a nice evening. Thank you all. Ah.